In lesson three, we talked about magnetic fields. We said that's one of the characteristics that all magnets have. And we also said that these magnetic fields are the invisible lines of force that surround a magnet. The magnetic field is caused by the magnetic domain, the way that the electrons and the atoms line up to create that magnetic energy. And we said that even though we can't see the magnetic field, we can see its effect on ferromagnetic objects. Now, if I take my little bar magnet here and some paper clips, I can put this magnet in the paper clips and it'll pick up quite a few of them. And we can measure the strength of the magnet by how much it can pick up, by measuring the mass of what it's able to pick up. But these paper clips don't really give us an idea of the shape of the magnetic field. And that's what we want to look at today. How can we determine the shape and the size of the magnetic fields surrounding these magnets? Now in order to do this, I've made some blocks up here, and in these blocks I've actually put some magnets. So I've got a few different sets of magnets, configurations of magnets in these blocks, and we're going to look at the different magnetic fields that different types of magnets have. Now something else that we know about magnets is that magnets can interact with other magnets in two different ways. They can attract or they can repel other magnets, depending on which poles of the magnet are facing the other magnet. So I've got two bar magnets in this block here, and in this block I've got the north pole of one magnet facing the north pole of the other magnet. And we're going to see what effect that has on the magnetic field of the magnets. Now in order to do this, obviously we need something smaller, a finer material than those paper clips that we use. So for this we're going to use iron filings. These are just very small little pieces of iron about the, about the size and the texture of small grains of sand. And by sprinkling these iron filings out across our block, we're able to see the magnetic field, or not really see the magnetic field, but see its effect and see its shape. And you'll see what I'm talking about here as we sprinkle this on. So let's just add some iron filings. We're just going to sprinkle these onto our magnet blocks here. And you can see that as we begin to sprinkle the iron onto the blocks, it's lining up with the magnetic fields of these magnets. So what you're able to see here, and we'll just give this a little tap to kind of move those into place a little bit better, but what you're able to see here are the lines of force coming out of these magnets. Now you can also see that the magnetic force is strongest at the pole of the magnet. More of the iron filings is collected there than anywhere else. But you can also see between the north and the north pole that it's almost like the iron filings are pushing away from each other because like poles of a magnet will repel each other. And we'll be looking at that a little bit more in the next lesson. But it's interesting to see how the magnetic fields actually push away from each other. So even though the magnets are attracting the iron filings, they're not attracting it in that space between the poles where the magnetic fields are repelling. Now the second set of magnets we're going to look at also involve bar magnets. But in the case of these bar magnets, we have the north pole of one magnet facing the south pole of the other magnet. And we're going to see if that makes a difference in the shape of their magnetic fields. So let's just sprinkle a little bit of our iron powder on these and see what this looks like compared to our first one. And we'll just sprinkle a little bit on, give it a little tap like we did before. And you can see now that the magnetic field of this magnet, or these two magnets, looks quite a bit different than what we saw before because we know that the north pole of a magnet will attract to the south pole, or pull on the south pole of a magnet. So we can see now how the iron filings are actually pulled across that gap between the magnets, because now the magnetic fields are actually pulling on each other and stretching that iron filings out across the gap. And we can put these side by side here, and you can see the difference in the two shapes of the magnetic fields. You see, you know, down the sides of the magnets away from the two ends that are touching, it looks about the same. But right here where where that gap is between the magnets, you can see the definite difference between two magnets that are attracting the North Pole against the South Pole and the two magnets that are repelling the North Pole against the other North Pole. So it's kind of interesting, you know, we talk about these concepts of magnetic fields, magnetic attraction, magnetic repulsion, but being able to actually see the effect of this on the magnetic fields is pretty interesting. And these iron filings and the, the magnets here give us a really cool way to demonstrate what the magnetic fields look like. You can see just how far out the lines of force go and see the effect that they have on the iron filings around them. 
Now I've got a couple other magnet blocks here that we're going to look at. Uh, for this particular one, I've got three neodymium magnets here. These are just small round disc magnets. They're very powerful magnets. And the second one is a ring magnet. And we'll just take a look at these and see what the magnetic fields look like with our iron filings on these two types of magnets. Here are our neodymium magnets. We're just going to sprinkle that iron powder on there. And you can see on these, the iron filings are clumping up a lot around the edges of the magnet, but there's not as much sticking on top of the magnet. And we do know that the magnetic forces are stronger in some areas of magnets than the other, and they're going outward from the poles of the magnet. So we're able from this to sort of see the shape of that magnetic field. And even though these are very strong magnets, they don't necessarily pull the iron filings in from as far away they hold it tighter, but they don't pull it in from as far away as the bar magnets did, which is kind of interesting. The last magnet we're going to look at here with our magnet blocks is our ring magnet here. And this one's interesting because it's got a gap in the middle here. It's not a solid disc like we saw with the neodymium magnets. So we're going to see what sort of effect that has on the magnetic field. Regardless of the shape of the magnet, you know, there's, there's long bar magnets, there's square shaped block magnets, there's round um, spherical magnets, uh, there's discs, there's all sorts of rings and other types of magnets, but all magnets, regardless of their shape, have one north pole and one south pole. So it makes for some kind of interesting configurations when we start looking at the actual shapes of the magnetic fields on these different magnets. Let's sprinkle some iron filings on our ring magnet here and we can see what that's going to look like. So you can see here with our ring magnet, it's kind of an interesting configuration with the magnetic field. We see a lot of iron filings kind of sticking, attracting to the very edge of the magnet going outward. We see some in the middle going upward, which gives us kind of an interesting shape there for that magnetic field. Again, that hole in the center of the magnet definitely changes the shape and the effects of the magnetic field on that magnet. So our magnet blocks have given us a really interesting way to see the size, the shape, and the area of effect of the magnetic fields of these different types of magnets. And it is important to understand that every magnet, although it has the same basic parts to it, it's got its north pole, it's got its south pole, and it's got its magnetic field, depending on the size of the magnet, the type of material in the magnet, and the shape of the magnet, these magnetic fields are going to look a lot different from one magnet to the other.